Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to start off with dealing with this Ike probe because even though uh, we fulfilled the requirements of this mission and it just has to stay in its proper orbit for 178 more days, I did not fulfill one of the requirements for this Explore Ike mission that I should have. I have no. I think I must have picked up that mission before or after I did this mission because obviously we transmitted data but apparently this one did not read it so let me try and do some more data uh, let, let me get some legit data I don't know um, uh, it's possible that ah th this uh, not the soil particle collector how about uh, this altimetry data we can send. 50 signs too. Because that's been uh, collected over time. We weren't able to send that initially. There we go. Oh, I thought I turned that sound off. Oh, I bet it's because I changed versions. I forgot to... Okay, okay. Um, no, we don't need that. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Alright, so data has been transmitted. So we have done that part. There is still a matter of landing on Ike. I mean, but this is a, quite an expensive probe, and I think I want to send it over to Duna to do more science there. And, of course, scanning the surface. So I'm probably not going to try and just uh, land this, even though it doesn't have lander legs. I'll probably send it back over to Duna to do more things. Alright, but it still has to hang out in orbit for another 178 days. Let's take a look at what we can do with those Kerbals around Minmus because, well, I have to deal with them in some way or another, otherwise they're not going to be very happy with their habitat. Alright, so here we are. I don't know if it's possible that Bill needs some more experience in order to do what I'm expecting him to do. Maybe experience is a thing, I don't know. Um, let's, just, uh, let's just try and bring out the docking port and see if he can attach it or not, and then we'll decide what to do from there. Maybe upgrading the versions helped, but then again, KIS didn't upgrade. I didn't upgrade KIS. Does he still have the drill? Yes, he has. So let's equip that. Okay. Now, the inventory here. Let's say, well, it has the dialogue here. Okay. Yeah, it has the dialogue to attach the docking port. Let's say attach. Okay, so you can attach the docking port, but it looks like once it's attached, uh-oh, yeah, he can't uh, take it off again. I guess maybe he needs to upgrade himself before he can actually take something off again and reattach it, or something like that, I don't know. Or maybe it's because he can't carry the part? used to be able to but maybe they've instituted some limitation that the Kerbals can't carry something too heavy any one of those things is possible used to be possible to do this but I guess couldn't do this this time we have to dis disassemble the part otherwise we can't re-enter so off it goes alright let's board back let's just uh, return these guys then since they can't dock with the station we'll have to we should just build a different in the station. The problem is we have this uh, contract perform a science experiment on FF lander Minmus station. We have to dock with it and then perform an experiment. So let me just take the lander that's currently attached to it and do that contract and then we'll bring these guys back home. Okay so I need to have Valentina head into that pod. So I guess all we have to do is undock, redock, and do some science. So let's get a fair distance away. So dock with Minmus Station, perform an experiment, and return it to Kerbin. Uh, well, we have to return it to Kerbin, but let's dock and perform an experiment and return it. Mm. Okay, well, I can see what it is going to be difficult. Uh, maybe we can uh, have that uh, pod, the Delphi crew rotation pod, come along. Uh oh, the uh, the station is wiggling. Uh, have it come alongside, pick up pick up the science, 
and pro possibly Valentina. Bring Valentina back and then, yeah, something like that. No, oh, magnetism. Jeez. Okay, docked. Perform an experiment. Okay, keep data. And we'll bring the pressure data home since it recovery gives extra science. Keep that data as well. Now let's bring the Delphi crew rotation pod, get Valentina in there, get its pilot in here. If it has a pilot, hold on. Is the other one a pilot or a scientist? It's a scientist. Okay, we'll get the scientist in there, get Valentina here. We'll bring Bill back because Bill... But then Alton can't pilot the pod. Well, we'll send a pilot some other time. Obviously, that's the only choice because I do want to bring Valentina back and Bill back so that he gets an extra point. Maybe that'll help him out. Okay, so let me plot for uh, rendezvous and do the approach and everything. All right, preparing to match velocities with the target. We have to watch our Delta V, though. We want this to make it back home. Okay, that should be good. I want to be drifting away. Uh, let's have Alton EVA and transfer to the science lab. Mm, this is not the best way to approach. Uh, let's see, grab. Yeah, that's why. Okay. At least it didn't go flying off too much. All right, board. Valentina refuses to work. Oh, she's she gets turned into a tourist? I didn't realize that's what's happened with... Uh, may not disembark from the vessel. Um, maybe if I transfer her into the hitchhiker lander can, she'll be happier? I don't know. But she's got the tourist label. Well... Okay, so we'll have to dock. We really have to dock something to this in order to bring Valentina back home, which means using the small docking port. There's no way of getting around that now. But anyway, hopefully she'll be more comfortable. I suppose that means that uh, we will have to have Bill complete the mission by bringing the science down. Alton. Well, we can start research. And uh, I think we can actually send some of the science in there as well for processing. We don't have that much science though. View data. Process in lab. Yeah. But it's still, oh, well, let's just log it. Keep. Log temperature. Keep. Okay. So now Alton has stuff to process. He's got data to process, yeah. And he's getting some science per day. That's nice. Okie dokie. Well, this is an uh, unfortunate turn of events. You normally think of Valentina as a can-do kind of person, but apparently even she has her limits. And of course, the stuff has to be on the other side. Okay, take data. Okay, board. All right, we've got the data. Let's try to bring Bill back home safely. We'll probably have to get out of Mimosphere Influence and then pull the orbit down. Otherwise, we get a weird elongated orbit, which I don't want. That will just speed up our approach. Okay, so let's exit first and then drop our orbit. Okay, let's go back to Kerbin. Exiting Minmosphere of Influence. How many days? 18 days to get back. Hmm, now that's an interesting thing because I took a look at the interplanetary alignments beforehand and we're pretty close to where we could transfer to EVE. I don't want to pass that up, so let's keep an eye on that. We do have a contract. We have a contract to uh, conduct an orbital survey of Gilly. I am uh, willfully ignoring Shellwell Kerman in the orbit of the moon, who we need to rescue. 
we should do that and also get the ore from the moon maybe I don't know combine some missions okay but anyway that's another thing we need to do but I think the ghillie probe is an easier one to launch quickly and of course we could scan ghillie for resources and in that case possibly build a base on ghillie which could have a lot of enormous beneficial effects uh, yeah hab expired for Valentina there supplies is only 32 days Mm. We were carrying a lot of supplies. Actually, Bill has 243 days of supplies on this thing. So, actually, before bringing Bill back home, let's get a pod to dock with the Minma Station, one that has the right docking port, and uh, launch that. How about that? Let's make sure Bill has a periapsis. I don't have Kerbal Alarm Clock, though. Right now, he doesn't have a good periapsis, but... Let's do that, and then it's only 13 days, and then do some other things. But I'll have to keep track of it since I don't have curb alarm clock because it was throwing up all those errors. I'm gonna go for 26 kilometers. As you can see, we just barely had enough fuel. Okay, 26.6. Alright, so that will be our approach, and boy, is it going to be a lot of heat coming in like this. Not as much as from an interplanetary transfer, but still. Okay, let me take a look at building a supply and transfer vessel for Valentina. Alright, so this is a quick launch vehicle for Minmus. I've given it a lot of extra Delta V. It's carrying some supplies, though not as much as the other one was. I intend to carry a pilot with me, so let's take a look at who we've got. We definitely need to... Oh, well, we could send Jeb, but I, I'd like I'd like Jeb hanging out and Valentina as well. Let's hire another pilot. Uh, Sudeth? I don't think so. I don't like that name. Rodsby. That's a little bit... Janisa? Rodsby. Rodsby, I can say easier. Um, not much on the courage, though, but... Yeah, the other names are a little bit tough for me. Rodsby, I can deal with. Okay, so we'll send Rodsby and bring Valentina back. Now, this does have a probe core on it, and that's because Valentina is currently a tourist, frustratingly enough. So we do have to have the probe core in order to control it, otherwise she won't be able to... Uh, we would have to have a two-person capsule at minimum. So, anyway, that is the situation. Let's get this launched, and uh, you note I have fins because I don't want to take any chances. It is non-recoverable at this point. I decided to just go with a simple system, and so yeah, it'll cost us 35900 but that's fair enough. And we'll be getting funds from completing the mission. Okay, here we are. Let us bring Rod Speakerman to Minmus, and then bring Valentina back. That's an interesting rocket. Okay, off we go. Alright, looking good so far, no problems. Rodsby looks somewhat concerned here. Uh, there's a jiggle. Hold on, uh, let me... SAS it instead. Jeez, uh, that was definitely a smart ASS jiggle there. Mm. I don't know what that was about. Uh, smart ASS also has a rocky motion. I'm gonna throw down. Sounds like Rodsby's complaining about it. Okay. Set. And ignition. All right, and this is actually a swivel. The other stage actually had a skipper on it. So we're using fairly powerful engines to ensure a good orbit for Rodsby. Rodsby looks happier now. Again, I didn't want to take any chances, though I don't know what to say about the smart ASS and the rocking motion there. 
but actually this could get into orbit even on a failure of the first stage if like for some reason we had to ditch it quickly. I will let this stage re-enter one way or another. I think it'll end up uh, falling short of orbit anyway by design. Okay, we are now in space. Rodsby taking his first trip into space. Oh, but deviating a bit there. I wonder how Smart ASS can possibly deviate like that. Jeez. Oh, uh, this might make... might be able to make orbit. I'll have to shut down early then. We're in such a tight orbit. Yeah, let's stop it there. Let it re-enter. Set. And ignition. Okay, that will do it. Let's plot for Minmus. Okay, we have a Minmus periapsis. We could hit the moon as well, but we don't need to do that. And it will actually reach there before that Delphi crew rotation pod will bring Bill back. Okay, how's that approach? Could be closer. Okay, that's close enough. Alright, let's take a look at these two missions. Also, there's the Matter of Eve. I think that's still more than 40, 54 degrees. It should be that uh, Eve is 54 degrees behind us. And that'll be the right transfer time. Okay, so let's try and match with our station. Our current relative inclination is best described as really bad. Well, it's making hard, for, making it hard for me to predict things, but I think that's all right. Still using the LV909. We still have another engine to use if we so need it. Actually, we'll probably have the LV-909 crash into Minmus to dispose of it. The RCS isn't balanced to have it with us when we try and dock. Okay, and actually I will currently try and dispose of this engine by dumping it and then boost back up. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. You're not getting the feel of this and then boost back up with the other engine the rear guard okay that disposes of that engine separation okay but I don't want to go in this direction I want to go towards the station or at least killing the relative velocity with respect to the station there we go which will also get us into orbit there we go. So we're going to approach the station, undock the lander, dock in that place, and then do all the things. Rodsby's already used a lot of supplies apparently. It says 69 days of supplies. But already used more than a tenth of the supplies. Well, I guess that's about right. There we go. Well, if we let go of the lander in this direction... Uh, the problem is the lander needs a pilot. Uh, well, we'll have to do something to rescue it or something. That'll be for later. Yeah, it doesn't have a remote control unit. And we're gonna be letting it go. Okay, we don't want Smart ESS on. Well, this has stock magnetism, so it shouldn't be too hard to dock. There we go. Alright, so first of all, let us switch Rodsby and Valentina. Right, now let us undock this crew transfer pod.
Back away, back away. Then Rodsby has to... Oh, I forgot to transfer the supplies. Shoot. Hold on, board. Redock time. Sorry, sorry. Redock, transfer supplies, then go away. This is a fairly bad docking approach, but I have faith in the magnetism. There we go. Alright, let's transfer those supplies. That should be enough for a trip back. Okay, now undock. Now she's smiling. Actually, uh, it seems like she's restored her pilot piloting. I think Valentina's happy in this pod. So maybe she's alright and everything is good. Anyway, let's bring her back. But now I want to get Rodsby into that little lander. And bring it back to dock. Well, this has been sort of a crew rotation episode. Unintentionally. Oh boy. Yeah, he bumped into it. Okay, back in this little thing. Okay, Minmus Station is finally all back to normal. And we can bring Valentina back. Let's send Valentina on a trajectory back to Kerbin. Okay. Let's see what that did. Yeah, Kerbin Periapsis is going up if we continue burning, so we'll just exit. Bill is over here right now. Okay, uh, we're past Apoapsis, so we should retroburn here to bring the Kerbin Periapsis down. Okay, that's 26 kilometers. Let's take a look at how the Delphi crew rotation pod is doing. Valentina will get into the atmosphere of Kerbin in eight days. It's possible that I should launch my ghillie probe before either of these missions gets into the atmosphere of Kerbin, but let's see how long Bill has exactly. Mm, three days. Yeah, let me launch the ghillie probe. Uh, we won't do the transfer yet. We'll see whether it's the right time to do the transfer, but let's go back to the Space Center and launch that thing. Alright, so this is the Gilly Probe launch, and taking it from the top here, we see that we have a Carbonite Scanner, two Goo Experiments, a uh, Thermometer Barometer, and also I've decided to use the Universal Storage version of the, of the experiments. So we've got Multispectral Imaging there, we've got Magnetometer there, we've got Orbital Telescope there, and Science Junior there. Also the RPWS antenna is there. We also, of course, have an actual antenna, very important, to transmit the data. And if we take a look at the requirements for the Orbital Survey of Gilly, um, we have to make sure that we have actual science value transmitted. That's nice. I like that requirement. And they want multispectral analysis, orbital telescope, material study, magnetometer scan, RPWS, and the goo. So we have all those things. Alright, so we are all set on the actual science. Now, that probe alone, and that's the actual probe right there, and we've, we, this is the, where the solar panels are. They don't have, uh, it doesn't have any extendable solar panels, and then a uh, little ant engine. But it's 36,000 funds, so it alone is uh, two-thirds of the cost of the launch, which is good. I mean, I like it when the payload is the costly bit 
and the rocket is relatively cheap. We're using rear guard engine here, and then here we are using the LV-909, the Terrier. And then finally at the bottom, this is an SRB. And of course, SRBs do not have much gimbling. Uh, the procedural SRBs do have 0.25 degrees, but that's basically zero. Um, so we've got little twitch engines. Is that enough? I don't know. We're going to find out. On the right side, uh, if we have to try and make orbit without it, we can probably do that. But then again, the SRB can't shut off, so um, it is a little bit of a risk here. But I want to see whether the twitch engines can hold this. We'll try and go really, really carefully. But there is a high probability of flipping. Let's just be honest about it. There is a high probability of flipping, but this is recoverable. Now, here is the tank for the twitch engine fuel, and we've got enough fuel to run those uh, twitches for a minute and 40 seconds to match the SRB. And it's got parachutes and everything to make sure it gets back down safely. So on, on the bright side, we will recover this, uh, probably one way or another. Yep. As long as it doesn't break up due, due to aerodynamic forces. Okay, well, here we go. Throttle up. SAS is on. I'll probably keep it pointed straight up for a little while longer than usual just to make sure that we don't flip. We'll try that out. Okay. Uh, well, we might as well launch. Uh, yeah, let's stage the clamps at the same time. There's no point in staging them separately. Okay. Launch. Off it goes. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I don't sense it's gonna cooperate. No, it's already not cooperating. Great. Now I would have liked to have parachutes. <laughs> now let's see what we can do about this. I don't think very much. Looks like we need more electric charge on the probe. It's only got 10? Well, that's something important to notice, but man, this thing is just gonna get pulverized. Even though it looks like a legit rocket and it probably should have been able to do a decent mission, no such luck. Okay, I think, I think I will hold off on the ghillie probe for now. I think let's bring back Valentina and Bill and call it an episode with that. Well I've technically tested neither system that we're bringing back so yeah let's hope that things go alright. Okay separation And then retrograde, please. So our periapsis is still 26.6 .6 kilometers. Here we go. It's really, really hot out there. Well, the ablator is doing its thing. Let's hope it'll do enough. There goes the service module. That should be alright. Also have to worry about mountains. Those mountains are definitely looming over there. Yep. There is a distinct loom to them. Bill seems unconcerned though. This was a very bad trajectory. This is not a good path to bring the Kerbals back on. Well, seems like we're parachute safe. Too hot. Okay, let me just arm them. Okay, well, it looks like 
gets sort of flat here. I don't know, that, that's rough terrain, though. Yeah, this might be bumpy. 5.4 meters per second, though. Let's let's have SAS on instead of Smart ASS in the hope that it can keep us steady when we hit this slope. It does, and we can recover. Okay, 45 science earned. Did we fill the contract? Uh, well, it's behind this thing, so let's get past this. Some funds, and Bill Kerman got 6 XP to advance to level 1. Okay, something... Okay, that was the recovery. We had a milestone, but it didn't say anything about the contract being fulfilled. Yeah, we didn't fulfill this contract. Form an experiment on the station, return it to Kerbin. I guess you have to return it in the pod that you dock with. Which means we should have done it with, uh, with the pod that Valentina's coming back in, and we didn't do that. Let me take a look at how long we have for these contracts. Um, this deadline in eight years. This one doesn't have a deadline. Shellwell, nine years. This doesn't have a deadline. Eleven years, four years. So we have some time. And this we're already taking care of. So this will definitely be done in time. So yeah, we do have some leeway. Let's go to Valentina and bring her back safely. Alright, Valentina on her return trajectory. Let's see what happens. Hopefully no mountains. Nope, there's Kerbin. Okay. Let's get rid of the service module. That doesn't leave the pod with too much electric charge. It's only got 50 and no way of recharging. We're coming down in the dark, so I have no idea what kind of terrain it'll be. Actually, I can see the coastline there. So that's something. Well, that's something bad, because I'd rather slosh down. Okay, here we go. Of course, this is also from Inmus. So, also a hot trajectory. Okay, everything is looking good. We are down below Kerbin orbital velocities. As far as the terrain, I guess it doesn't look too bad. It's tough to say in the dark. There is a rough patch over there of some kind. Okay, we're through the worst of it. Parachutes read okay, so I'm gonna arm them. Oh, that deployed quickly. Okay. That one's not deploying quickly. I hate when that happens. That means I didn't apply to symmetry partners properly. Hold on, maybe we can copy two other shoots? There we go. But that's a triple shoot and the other one isn't. I'm pretty sure I tried to copy two other shoots, but it apparently didn't take. Okay, down to 4.7 meters per second on full parachute deployment. Looks safe and level. Alright, and Valentina is back. Okay, well, uh, 25 science earned for that. What have we got here? Oh, well, let's go through this. Not much by way of funds returned. But it was a cheap pod anyway. And it was far away from the KSC. Valentina earned... 8 XP and advanced to level 2. I wonder why she got more... Well, I guess she landed on Minmus, that's why. So she advanced to level 2. Though she really should get a reprimand for... For, you know, uh, disobeying orders and being a tourist. Nobody should be a tourist. Okay. Alright then. Well, I think... Let's take a look at where Eve is, and then I'll decide whether I'm going to do a ghillie probe in the next episode. Uh, yeah, I think we're still in a good alignment for Eve. We can probably send the ghillie probe in the next episode. So that's the first thing I'll do next time. Uh, this was a crew rotation episode. We will continue our exploration of the Kerbal system 
next time. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.